I've been using a platform called Riverside for the last few years to record high quality interviews and high quality podcasts with videos. And in this video, I want to show you exactly how to use that step by step. Now, the reason why I don't use Zoom or Microsoft Teams or apps like that to record is because those record over Wi-Fi. So there's any type of issues with someone's Wi-Fi on an interview or in a podcast is going to come across in the recording. Riverside has a unique ability where it records on the person's computer while you're talking to them or a group of people, and then it uploads in real time as you're talking to them. So the recording quality is native and it doesn't matter if they have a bad Wi-Fi connection. That only comes across on the live call, but not in the recording. So that's the main reason why most professionals use Riverside, but I'm gonna make this very non-technical. Anyone could use Riverside to record high quality videos. I'll go ahead and put a link here to Riverside. You could go ahead and sign up there and I'll quickly show you this pricing page. So they do have a free plan that right now has two hours of multi-track recording where you could record multiple people's audio and video tracks. Now I switched over to this plan. This one gives me five hours and this again is monthly. So that's plenty of time for me for that amount of recording I do. This one gives you up to 15 hours and this one has all kinds of different AI tools like AI transcriptions across different languages, show notes and all kinds of different things that are also useful. So it depends on your use case, but you could start for free and upgrade as needed. Once you sign up and log in, this is inside of the platform right here. And the first thing you want to do is over here, there's something called studios. You want to press the plus sign and create yourself a new studio for every project. You want to create a new studio and name it. So this is going to be Riverside tutorial. Now record audio only. I don't want that. I also want to record the video, but for audio only podcast, leave this on right here, but I'm going to keep it off for video and audio transcription. I want English and I'm going to press create right over here. Okay. Now inside of the studio, I have a couple of different options. I could actually start recording and inviting people and scheduling a recording for a later time. I'm going to show you that you could also create these things called projects. I'll show you this too. So let's say I want to create different episodes related to this podcast. So this is episode number one, and I could create that. This just helps me stay organized and I could just jump into the specific folder, but you don't have to do that. Typically, I just create different studios for each project, but I don't do shows that are linear like episode one through 10. So I don't create projects, but for you, it might be a useful option to stay organized. So on top right here, we could actually record. We could invite other people to record with us. This is going to create a recording right now. We could plan, which means if I click this, I could schedule a session for a later time. This is most likely what you want to start doing. So if you schedule it, you could name it right over here. You could pick a date and time. And let's say this is for 11 o'clock today. I could set that time. Again, your time zone is going to be available over here, which is going to change it for your guest if they're in a different time zone. And right over here, when you're scheduling, you could add the guests right over here. So type in an email. And before I do that, let me just show you this drop down because there's three different options available here where you're inviting it. Right now, I am the host, which does not show up over here. So you have host, audience, guest, and producer, four different options. For the most part, you're going to be the host and you're going to invite a guest, very simple. Audience, they're not gonna appear on camera, their audio is not gonna appear, but they could listen in for some reason if you wanna have an audience listening in. A lot of times I also have this producer option, which allows you to talk, but you won't be recorded. Your feed and your audio, both video and audio won't be recorded. A lot of times I'm the producer and I have a host and a guest or two different guests talking to each other. In this case, I'm gonna be inviting a guest and I could type in their email and create a session from over here. And this is also a link that it creates where I could just copy and email this link if I don't want to add them from the previous and I could add it to my calendar. Okay, so you could see an upcoming session has been created over here. But since this is in half hour from now, I'm going to go ahead and record one to show you exactly how this works. These other options, you could upload existing videos if you want to go ahead and use the editing option. I edit with different apps, but this does have some editing options. I'll show you this page towards the end. Right now, let's jump into record. Now, this is the recording page. So everyone's going to see the same exact page. Your guests are going to see it. Anyone you invite is going to come to this page right over here. 
And on this page, what you want to do is you want to type in your name. Then it's going to ask you, do you have headphones or not using headphones? In this case, I'm not using headphones. Typically, you do want to use headphones, but if you choose I'm not using headphones, it's going to use some of its technology in the background to try to minimize echoes and things like that. So it does try to do a good job, even if you're not using headphones. If you are the producer, you want to switch this over, that you're the producer, then you won't be recorded. In this case, I'm going to be the host and I'm going to have a guest and we're both going to be recorded. So I'm not going to switch to producer mode. Now here on the right side, these are the options you have. Right now they don't have virtual backgrounds, but you could switch your cameras if you have a better camera. I'm just using my FaceTime camera over here. And you could also change your microphone, which I highly recommend you change. I'm using this high quality microphone right now, but it's going into my camera, so it's not connected to my laptop. But I recommend buying a microphone, typically for about $50 to $100. You could get a really good quality microphone. This is a little bit higher end, closer to three, dollars $400. But I'll put a link in the description if you're doing actual podcasts and interviews. You don't want your laptop's audio quality. You want to get a microphone with a USB, plug it in, and then you could select it from this dropdown. And with your speaker, again, if you have headphones, go ahead and use that. If not, you could just use your regular speaker from your computer. Okay, all that is set. I'm going to press join studio. Okay, now I'm inside of the studio right here. So I'm going to show up here on the left side and the people I, I invite are going to show up on the right side. I specifically didn't invite anyone, but the version I scheduled, they would appear, but they'll wait in a waiting room and they'll appear here on the right side. And then you have to press admit for them to come into the meeting. But right now, let me invite someone via email so they could come in. Again, you have those three options we talked about. Audience, if you... Don't want them to do anything, but just listen in. Guest, if you want to have a conversation between a host and a guest. And a producer, if you don't want the producer to be recorded at all, but be able to give directions to both the host and the guests. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Andrew here as a guest. And when you invite someone, they'll appear like this. And you could actually change their permission later of what they are. So you could change them to producer or remove the invite. Now, before Andrew joins, let me just show you a few of the other settings. So you could always mute yourself right over here. And that's going to mute you. You could turn off your camera right over here. It's going to show your profile picture. Again, if you're not using headphones, echo cancellation is going to be on by default. And these are all the settings that we changed when we first got into this page. So you could change all of those as well. If you want to change anything about the layout, the settings tab is really useful. So you could change pretty much everything you see over here. So there's the design of the layout as well. You could add your own logo. You could customize it. All these you could explore on your own. But I want you to go to the recording tab because this video is all about recording these. And we're going to record video and audio. We're going to make sure here if we have a noisy environment, we turn on noise reduction. That helps with quality of audio. But if you have a high quality microphone, you don't have to worry about that. So your sample rate, you're not going to change that. Just leave it here. And the video, you want standard resolution. Typically, this is going to cause more issues, especially most people, if they're using a laptop, they're not going to have access to high quality like 1080p or 4K cameras anyway. So this should be fine. This records in 720p, which is typically the resolution of most laptop cameras like the one I'm using here on a Mac. Frame rate, don't change this, 24 is fine and everything else could stay. It's gonna give you a quick countdown timer as well over here. They do have a live streaming options, but this video was more about the recording, but you could set up these destinations here and live stream directly from this platform as well. And it looks like Andrew has joined. He just has his camera off and he's on mute right now. So you could see if someone is muted and their camera is off, this is what it's gonna look like. But if I look over here, I have this guest now. So this is me. This is all my settings. And on the bottom is the guest. So the nice thing is I could actually, as a host or a producer, unmute them or turn on their camera on my end, or I could hide them. So I do have control over their settings too, which is useful, especially if you're doing any type of interviews with non-technical people, you could change these as well for them, including these other settings, except these other functions they will have to change on their own, I don't believe you could change these. At least I think this requires another upgrade, which I don't have. Then you also could chat. So this is just text chat here where you could have a text chat. You could add your brand, which is gonna change kind of the layout of how this gets recorded. So for example, if I change it, you could see, I could change the layout of what it looks like. The recording, by the way, doesn't change at all when I change anything over here as far as the shape. It's not gonna record it in square format. It's always gonna record it in the 16 by nine 
format, which then you could change in editing. You could also add text and media and more advanced things over on the right column. Now, on the very bottom, again, we have muting ourselves, the camera changes, speaker changes. We looked at all that. We also could add a script. If we click this, you could type in a script and it's going to read it or show it right in front of you. This is kind of an interesting option, like a teleprompter option as well, where the script shows up like this. So I haven't used this one, but I could see that coming in handy if you're reading off a script, but I typically do this for interviews. And then you could also share your screen over here, which is useful. And I'm gonna go ahead and press record. So this is gonna go ahead and start recording. So let me press that. It's gonna give that countdown. That was a setting as option, which I could have turned off. And right now we have recording in session. Now, as the recording is going, I wanna show you something that's happening over here. You see right up top right here, it says 60% uploaded, 78% uploaded. So as this video is going, it's gonna upload it. It's gonna first record it locally to someone's computer, my computer and Andrew's computer. And the Wi-Fi, any issues with the Wi-Fi is not gonna alter the quality. This is the main reason why you want to use Riverside over any other application that just records over Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi quality usually is not good enough. This is recording natively to your computer and uploading. So if you press finish, you want to make sure this gets to 100 and no one leaves. It usually takes a few seconds to a minute or two for that to happen. So I usually give a disclaimer. Hey, when we're done and I stop, just don't leave the call. Let this upload because it's still uploading from their computer. Okay, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna stop it right over here. And you can see we're still at 83%, 99. Okay, upload complete. So only took a few seconds, but again, that was only a minute or so of recording. In an hour or two hour session, this may be a few minutes over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and end the call. Everything has been uploaded. So if I end the call down here, I'm gonna say end session for all, or I could just leave the studio myself. In this case, we're done. It's gonna bring us over here. So our recording is gonna show up like this. So Andrew was gonna be on the right side. I'm gonna be on the left side. This is typically not how I would use it though, but the way the layout was, it does record it that way. But why I like this is because it actually records independent tracks. So if I go to the recording files right over here, you could see it recorded me as a separate track and it recorded Andrew as a separate track. It has the transcript and it has that multi-track view as well. So if I download this right here, high quality download, download raw video, here's the raw video of me talking through that whole session, right? And then I could take this and edit it with the other person or any number of guests are gonna have their own feed right over here. It's gonna show the resolution. This is based on what I had picked, which is 1280 by 720, 720p. So we have those, and these also have their own audio tracks independent with them recorded. So that was audio and video. I just had my computer on mute. So now if you wanted to edit it from here, all you have to do is go up here, press the edit tab. They have an entire edit suite basically built into this and it used AI to transcribe automatically based on the plan I have. I don't believe the free plan has this option right there, but let me skip through these. Okay, so you have your transcriptions, and if you edit, like if I just edit using the transcription right here, it's gonna edit the video. So you can see this whole section just got edited out because I deleted it, but I could always bring it back if I decided that was a mistake. I could go ahead and restore it and it restores the edit down here. So this is extremely useful to be able to edit text and it will edit the video for you. If you wanna create other formats up here, you could change it. So this was for YouTube that was recording 16 by nine, but I could go, so this would be me. Andrew again is this black area because we had his camera off right over here. So he's gonna show up over here. So you can do it that way too. And you could also create square format right from top. And again, if you're going to Spotify, for example, you could do audio only version of it as well. If you want to change the layout too, they do have all kinds of different options. So right now I was kind of on the smart layout over here, but you could do things like picture in picture. You could do a grid, all kinds of different things. They have this thing called smart scene where it finds the best layout for each moment, which is really interesting. So it might go back and forth between full screen and come back to the side by side view. Again, this has tracking option, captioning option, text option. I usually don't do this to do my complete edit. I usually use an editing app like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, which I have completely dedicated videos on this channel on as well. But you can explore this 
on your own. When you're happy, if you just press export on top, this is gonna let you export the video. Again, if you have the paid version, remove the watermark, and this is gonna export whatever you've edited down here. So I already exported the individual clips if I wanted to take that into a different app, but this lets me export the entire finished video over here. If I go to my exports tab right over here, this is gonna show me all my edited videos. So this is the one that's exporting right now. Anytime I could click the Riverside tutorial to come back to this page, I could again create new studios, new episodes, plan other things, go back to the editing, ton of different options available here for you to explore on Riverside. Any resource I mentioned, I'll link in the description below this video. I hope you found this useful and I will catch you next time.